Justin Rose with Metal Holic Magazine, and I am with Christopher Dahlman of Dahlman. Your music is rather hard to define. It's dark, mysterious, and moody. It's been hailed as gothic metal, but I hear some 80s pop influence as well. How do you describe your vision for the band's sound and imagery? You know, a lot of people will go into long-winded explanations of things, and for me, I just call it dark rock. Um, I like the simplest terms. Uh, for me, it was the more simple, the better. And, uh, you know, a lot of people listen to it for themselves and figure out what label they want to slap on it. It doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't really bother me either way. And I certainly have a lot of influences. There's certainly a lot that uh, goes into the uh, music as far as, like, what I listen to and, and what I'm influenced by. But, you know, it's certainly dark music. On top of that, you know, you can certainly call it rock and roll. I would say it's more rock than it is metal. So throw those two things together, call it dark rock, give it a listen for yourself and, uh, you know, you can decide. Well, I read somewhere that you sort of call it uh, music for the heartbroken. It's kind of a common phrase that we hear a lot from people who um, have gone through similar things that I have and identify with the music, and we get, you know, messages from people or people that come up to set at shows, and they say, you know, the music really speaks for me. The way that the words are, the lyrics, uh, and, or the way that the music is done, or the attitude with which it's done, it really speaks for the person and what they went through, and they really identify with it. So... In a way, not intentionally, because for the most part, I just write the music for myself. I write the music that I want to hear. I don't really have an audience in mind. I don't really think about that stuff. I never really have. But in doing so, because we're not all that different, we all kind of go through the same things. When I speak for myself, I end up speaking for a lot of people. And so it kind of becomes, you know, the voice of a broken artist. I got the sense from listening to the album that it has a very European flavor. Is that vibe intentional? Is that something that you're very into musically, or do you even feel that that's there? You no, know, not, not at all. I mean, I hear it all the time. I know there's a lot of, like, power metal bands that are doing, you know, stuff that's kind of along the lines of goth rock in places in Europe, but I don't know. I, I certainly don't have any intent sound European at all. For me, I just try to write good rock riffs. I use the keyboards a lot for my lead melody. I, I kind of just don't overthink it. I just do what kind of comes natural and... You know, if it happens to be that what we're doing is something similar to, you know, what's going on in Europe, and so be it. But it certainly isn't a goal or an aim by any means. The debut album, Love Is Gone, is out on uh, Roadrunner. came out on February 2nd, I believe. The response so far has been very positive from everything I've seen. How are you guys feeling about the final product and the response? Well, I'm certainly happy with the album. It was a long time coming, so we put a thought into how we were going to portray the first impression of, of Dom and so I'm, I'm certainly satisfied with, with the end result, and it's beyond my expectations and overwhelming how much people have, have been enjoying the album. You're always going to have your critics, and you're always going to have the person who wants to have an opinion about everything, but for the most part, as far as people who just love music and like to listen to music and are music lovers, it's certainly gotten a far more positive reaction than I could have ever hoped for. You had a long time to cultivate these songs. Do you, do you think writing for the second record will be more difficult, or do you already have some of that up your sleeve? No, I would say I would have a good four or five albums up my sleeve as far as songs to choose from, because that's kind of how it came about. We didn't sit down and say, okay, let's now write for record number one. It was more of, okay, we've been doing this for so long, we're finally going to get the chance to put our music out there in a big way. What songs do we want to have come out first to be the first impression, to be chapter one in the story of Dominic? And so that's kind of how I've approached it. It was really picking and choosing the songs from over the past decade. You know, the ones that didn't get chosen this time might get chosen next time because they, it certainly wasn't because they weren't good enough. So I, I kind of always like telling a story and having smaller pieces that are part of a bigger puzzle or a bigger picture. So when I think of the first album, I just think, okay, this is just a small portion of the story of Dom, and, and I think there's going to be a lot more to come and, and changes that may not be expected for the next, you know, couple albums. When the album came out, I believe you were over on tour in Europe with Lacuna Coil, um, and I, yeah. saw, I saw you got to, to be interviewed by the lovely Christian Scabia. What was that like? Oh, it was cool, you know, because we had toured with them here in the States, so it was like seeing old friends again, you know, and, and certainly once we got on the tour, it was just fantastic because, you know, we had toured with them last July in the States, and so, you know, I went on a promo, a little promo tour for two weeks in, in December, and I didn't even know she was going to be interviewing me until I got to Milan, Italy. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she's one of the interviewers. And it was, just, it was kind of just a, a really nice reunion. And now the tour that you're on with uh, HIM, We Are the Fallen, and Drive A, how's the tour going so far? What's it like being out with those guys? It's 
it's been great. You know, we, we did a probably about 13 or 14 shows with just him. It was just us two in Europe right after the Lacuna Coil tour. And then we came over here to, to do it with, you know, also two other bands are now on the bill. And it's been really, really good for us. We're just really thankful and grateful that we got on this floor because it certainly, we're, we're, we're allowed to put people who I think will, uh, really will appreciate what we're doing. And it's kind of showing every night. You know, we, we play and, and the reaction has been overwhelming and, you know, certainly very positive. Right. It's like you guys all seem to be uniquely different, but still sort of blend together very well in your styles. Yeah, we get compared a lot, but I think, you know, it's largely due to the fact that we, him and Domin, kind of have the same content as far as, like, what, the type of stuff that we sing about. Right. But um, musically, I think, you know, him's definitely a lot more metal-oriented and we're kind of a lot more rock and roll. Oriented, I think that's probably it. What can fans expect from a live Domin show? I can just tell you what I hear from people who come come and meet us at the shows and stuff. People usually tell us, you know, for fans that that have the album and know who we are, the reaction is usually that the live show is a lot more has a lot more atmosphere than they expected, and at the same time, it's a lot more intense and and aggressive live than what they hear on the album. So. I suppose that's what they could expect. I mean, musically, the way we approach it, I certainly tailor the songs a little bit more for a live experience. I don't want people to just come to the show and have it sound like they just turned the album up really loud. We add interludes, we add intros and outros, and just really try to create an experience for the person that's watching and hopefully pull them in and grab them, you know, emotionally. Like, my ideal goal is that somebody in the audience is getting chills or, you know, has a moment where they're just like, whoa. You know, apparently we've been, we've been doing a good job with that because it's kind of what we get told all the time. What message or statement would you like to make to the listeners and readers? What would you like to have them know about Domin? Well, there's actually quite a lot. Um, musically, I put a lot of thought into the lyrics and a lot of things have double meanings. And sometimes there's the obvious meaning and there's the underlying meaning. So I think people who kind of enjoy like little secrets like that or you know, because I've always enjoyed things where I'm listening to music and I listen to it in headphones and I discover a new sound or something that, some little kind of treat that a band has put buried in, in the mix. And we definitely have that same approach musically. I think there's all kinds of things that people won't hear the more they listen to it. And also just within the lyrics, there's a lot of thought and meaning put into almost everything. So that's one thing. I think also, uh, you know, I just really encourage people to come see us live because I do think it's, it's definitely the whole new experience from just listening to the song at home. I hope people, you know, give us the opportunity to share that with us. And of all the songs on the album, are there any that you're especially fond of looking forward to listeners hearing? Oh, you know, I have my favorites. Um, I'm kind of curious to see people's reactions to the song, Honestly, which is like the second to the last track on the album. I think that's certainly very different from a lot of the other ones. My personal favorite is, is the title track, Love is Gone. To me, it just kind of has a very kind of classic and, and timeless rock and roll feel. It was a song that almost didn't make the album. You know, it kind of just got added on at the last minute, and it's my personal favorite. I think, for me, it's one of my um, better vocal performances on the record. I, I'm, I'm definitely uh, pushing for people to listen to Love Is Gone, and, and honestly, see what they think. And of all the songs on the album, was there one that was particularly difficult for you personally to write? in terms of the lyrical content and the emotion in it? You know, I think a, a lot of them were difficult at the time. You know, I, I think Love is Gone was a difficult song to write at the time. Uh, My Heart, Your Hands was very difficult to write at the time. But, you know, in, in a way, the songs, even though they're kind of about trying times, they're not meant to make you feel down. And I think most people will tell you that it's more, you get more of an empowered feeling mm -hmm. listening to the music than you do any kind of thing that's depressing or, or drags you down. And so in a lot of ways, when I made those songs, it was more therapeutic. It wasn't like I was sad to make the song. It was kind of, when I made it, I felt like I was conquering something that I kind of wanted to get rid of, whether it was a bad feeling or, or a memory, you know. I kind of just turning something bad into something really good. So I think each song is kind of a little, a little victory in its own way. And in that sense, they were really helpful to write.